for today. Well, I'm Tom LaSalle, and I'm here. I'm a past Commodore from the uh, Minneapolis Aquatennial, so I kind of lean towards Vulcan, you know. <laughs> I'm in favor of summer coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, I look forward to this too. My name is Dan Stoltz with uh, Spire, but I was King Boreas in 2015. I uh, grew up in St. Paul, loved St. Paul, uh, watched Winter Carnival as a young boy, and just always, this is such a highlight, is having this beautiful torchlight parade. It's just always so much fun. Well, I grew up in St. Paul also. I'm a Cretan graduate. Oh. I uh, used to come to the parade uh, when I was 10 back in uh, 19... <coughs> uh, you could... Uh, <laughs> You, we'd, we'd take the bus down, just my buddy and me, and watch the parade. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you don't, you don't let. Uh, we didn't let our ten-year-olds do that, nor do our ten-year-old grandchildren get to do that. <laughs> but uh, different times, or at least we didn't know what was going on. No, that's right. Yeah, that's there might right. Be more communication. So come on over, folks. We will be starting in about three, four minutes. It's going to be fun, and uh, you'll have a great view. The parade comes through right through here, ends down uh, another block or so. And this is where the overthrow takes place. So you've got front row seats here, there'll be fireworks, and maybe, maybe Boreas will win this year. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see. And while we're waiting, I just want to draw your attention to the fire truck over here. It's called, the Vulcan crew, they call this affectionately Laverne. Uh, I'll let them tell a little bit of the story of that. But this is the Vulcan's uh, chariot, if you will. It's their royal, royal float, and they will travel as a group on this uh, beautiful fire truck. I don't even know the year of it. I think we'll find that out as well. But uh, if you see the fire truck or you hear it blowing the horns, it's usually the Vulcan's right around the corner. So uh, we're excited about that. Now, you're not going to find out who Volcanus Rex is right now. You've got to hang around and see if they... Uh, if they're successful in overthrowing Boreas, we're going to meet uh, Volcanus Rex and his crew uh, after the overthrow. Then after that, you can go to the Vulcan Victory Dance, another kind of show of confidence. Yeah, yeah. yeah they've already booked it, I think, yeah, haven't they, Tom? They, they booked the dance, you know, and uh, it's only worked 135 times, so we'll, uh, we'll see this time. But, you know, I'm pretty sure Vulcan would have a party regardless. <laughs> I think so. And if, if any of you that are new to Carnival, uh, you know, King Boreas represents the winter, the cold. Uh, that's why uh, they're the Royals, they're, the, they're all in blue, and the Vulcans represent summer. And uh, their goal is to bring the heat and to bring us closer to summer. So you can't really argue with what they're all about. Can you, Tom? Absolutely not. <laughs> all right, we're going to stop here for a minute. We'll be starting because this is being televised as well. Okay. Welcome to the 136th St. Paul Winter Carnival, the coolest celebration on earth. Hey everybody, well thanks for joining us tonight for the Vulcan Victory Torchlight Parade. It's brought to you on SPNN TV, so thank you SPNN. I'm Tom LaSalle and with me tonight, Dan Stoltz. So we're really glad to have all of you. Dan, isn't it great Check. to be back? It is so great to be Check. back. Always my favorite night. And it's so gorgeous here. Well, we got a special treat for you tonight. We're going to bring up the Vulcan crew, this year's Vulcan crew, let you meet, uh, we're going to talk to Volcanus Rex, let you learn a little bit more about what, what the uh, Vulcans are about. They'll be back at the end of the parade. Volk, welcome. Let's give them a round of applause as they make up their, their way up here, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I am Volcanus Rex the 84th, the true fire king of the St. Paul Winter Carnival. Welcome to this evening. So, Volk, why is this night so special for you and your crew? Well, first off, we plan on winning. But first, I want to say, because this is the 136th St. Paul Winter Carnival, the coolest celebration on earth, thank you for joining us tonight for the Vulcan Victory Torchlight Parade brought to you by SPNN TV. Well, Volk, what are you predicting tonight? I'm predicting victory again. Really? Pretty confident. After our conclave last night, we had a lot of red, and we, we riled up the troops, and we're ready. Good. <laughs> well, you know, we were talking before you got, we were talking to this group about, now I come from Aquatennial, so I, I'm a little bit in favor of summer. <laughs> exactly. So how many want summer to come back and Vulcan to win tonight? 
Wow, you got a pretty big uh, support here system here. We do here. have support. See, difference between Boreas and I, we both love to ski. He likes to snow ski, I like to water ski. That's <laughs> well, the difference. When I, when I looked at the weather after last Saturday, it said it was going to be 38 tonight. We're, we're a little disappointed in uh, you I'm tonight. a little disappointed. It didn't, didn't quite turn out like I was hoping, but we're going to get there. We will bring summer back soon. Well, why don't you tell, tell these folks a little bit about what you've done during the week. Well, we started out, spent a lot of time at the snow park over there at the fairgrounds, and it was great for the families, and that's very important to us because we are very family-oriented. Tonight, I want to invite you all to the Vulcan Victory Dance after the, after the victory right here, which will be at the Intercontinental Hotel. And I want to tell you a little bit about all the community service appearances we've made at the schools, nursing homes, and also the community festivals we plan on being at. Those are really important things we do. Fantastic. Well, you had a great week, and I know tonight's a big night for you. So it doesn't end after tonight, right? So tell us a little bit of what, what happens the rest of the year with your crew. You know, it's, it's the end of the 10 days of the St. Paul Winter Carnival, but we are going year-round. We are going to communities all over. We're going to Tampa, Florida, to Bradenton in April. We have many festivals. We have La Crosse, Wisconsin. We have, I can't even think of where I'm so... Chicago at Thanksgiving, just, yep. just many, all over Minnesota though, the great state of Minnesota. And, and I gotta ask you, people always ask about your fire truck, so tell us what, 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 you, what you call that thing and uh, what it's all about. She is the eighth member of the crew, she is Laverne, she is a 1932 fire truck built in Laverne, Minnesota, and she is our pride and soul. <laughs> I, I like when the uh, emails start going around about trying to get Laverne to work. You know, <laughs> these blue people, these Boreuses, talk about like we don't get her. She hasn't failed us oh. once this whole carnival. <laughs> <laughs> so well, now, now listen, Fire King, you were, were you a part of a Vulcan crew before? Tell us a little bit about that. I was. I was General Flamus in the 2009 Vulcan crew. Very proud to be a flame. And you have to normally be one of the Vulcans before you're the Fire King. Is that, is that correct? Volcanus is always one of the, on a fire crew first. Before you can be Volcanus, you have to be a Vulcan. Okay. And, and I was Commodore in 2009. And you were Commodore in 2009. <laughs> so we get to, one of the things you should know, too, is uh, St. Paul Winter Carnival, uh, the uh, uh, King, Vulcan, Aquatennial, we all do a lot of things together. And uh, there's quite a rivalry here, but after tonight, when summer settles back in, everybody calms down and we all get along. And there's also a lot of friendship here tonight yes, too. Yes. And that's very important. So will you tell us a little bit at the, towards the end of the parade, you're at the end, you're bringing all this heat, you're bringing all these torches, fire. What's the goal here tonight for you? Well, the goal is to raise the citizens of St. Paul to be backing us, to join us in the fight against this cold that Boreas wants to celebrate. We've had a wonderful time celebrating, but it's time for the cold to go and to bring back summer and the warmth to St. Paul and the great state of Minnesota. So we, have, we get a lot of first time folks out here tonight that, uh, and we were telling them a little bit about the fire. T talk about what comes here, what the end of this looks like, because it's pretty spectacular. It's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. You'll see more fire and flames and fire trucks and people in red here. You won't believe it. It's, a, it's an awesome experience and it's really breathtaking for us too. Well, and Boreas gets to come up here with his queen, right? And there's a little bit of banter back and forth, and you guys are going to be kind of going back and forth. And uh, what happens after that? Well, traditionally, Boreas listens to his queen, and she's uh, the wise one in the bunch because Boreas is not always the smartest bulb on the tree. But <laughs> hey, be careful. He be will, careful. <laughs> well, Dan, you're an exception to that, okay. Dan. Well, we, we heard you have an inside man. Yeah. We do have an inside. I have a number of inside men that he's not aware of. <laughs> His prime is sponsored by Fire Boss. His royal coordinators, one was a flame, good friend of mine. His notos is a good friend of ours. We, there's more than I even want to tell you about all the secrets we have ready for him. Uh, and we'll talk to you more about notos. Notos is not the most trustworthy of the winds. No, that's for sure. No, he's not. I learned that just yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us about your victory dance. What's going on after the parade? We are having eight foot four performing at the Intercontinental Hotel, and we're having a fabulous party over there following this parade. And tickets are still, still available at the door. And we, it, we encourage you to go. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and we will be down there, too. Isn't it a little bit presumptuous, though, to be calling a victory parade? And we, we aren't even there yet, right? I mean... We like to plan ahead. 
If, if, for those of you who aren't aware, Vulcan has won the first 135 overthrows <laughs> out of That's 135. We're, yes, we're 135 <laughs> and 0 so far, so we've, we set our expectations high. <laughs> I just want to say, gentlemen, give me a rouse here. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of St. Paul. We look forward to a victory tonight. Have a good evening. Let's right, give them a round of applause. You. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks a lot. Well, Dan, they, they appear to have the uh, usual level of confidence we've seen in Vulcanus Rex and Boy, his crew. There's a lot of confidence there, Tom, and uh, this crew seems pretty prepared, so it should be a lot of fun here tonight for sure. You know, just to tell you folks kind of how Winter Carnival got started is back in, uh, back in 1885, the, uh, the trains were coming through, and this was a hub. It kind of it moved from the uh, East Coast we're getting a lot of feedback here. It moved from the uh, East Coast to the West Coast, and people were coming through St. Paul. So a reporter from New York came to St. Paul, and he went back and he wrote an article, and he called it St. Paul, another Siberia unfit for human habitation in winter. As a result, the Chamber of Commerce got together, and in 1886, they had the first winter carnival. So, so they're known for being quiet. <laughs> the <laughs> So the next group, two people we want to introduce you to are the queen and king who gave up their throne last Friday night. So come on up and join us. Let's hear it for Bore Boreas Rex and the queen here from last year. Where do we sit up? You here. Doesn't matter where I sit up? Right there. I just want to say in Minnesota fashion in 1885 when they said the Siberia of, uh, of all things, uh, the people of Minnesota did what Minnesotans do and make uh, you know lemonade out of lemons and we started Winter Carnival to celebrate our cold and it's been going on again for 136 years. So longest running festival in the United States and you're a part of it here tonight. So thank you for being here for sure. Well with, with me to my left I have King Boreas. Which number King? 80. Uh, 84. 84, what Darren Johnson. So, Darren, welcome, Darren. How's yeah. everybody doing out there? Staying warm? Woo! And Dan, who do we have here? So, we have the 2021 uh, Queen of the Snows, Kirsten Knudsen. Hey, Hail the Queen. And, Kirsten, we're going to trade Adjust here so we don't trade. How do you do that? So while they're doing an adjustment here, I just want to tell you all this, uh, is the, the king and the queen from 2020 and 21, um, Darren and Kirsten, and, and they're amazing because of COVID. Uh, they're the only royal family that served two full years. Uh, with last year, we were not able to have this great celebration. So uh, these two served with their royal families for two full years. Can we give them a round of applause for their service for that too? So thank you so much. So Dan, is this one coming out? How am I doing? <laughs> I sound right, loud. Sorry, folks, we had to do a little adjusting there. So, Darren, can you tell us uh, a little bit about your year? Uh, uh, the two years, yeah. Two years, that's right. Yeah. That was a record. You know, uh, we started off strong in uh, January of 2020. Sorry, I hear a little bit of a hearing problem. And then uh, we went to uh, Canada. We go to other festivals, the Festival de Voyageur, we got to go up there. And then shortly after that, you know, COVID struck, so we had to change things up a little bit. But we uh, created uh, different things like drive-by parades. Uh, we did a lot of stuff on social media, virtual nightings. We tried to get creative and be safe. Um, and then uh, last year when they just did the drive-through, we helped out with that. Technical issues, huh? <laughs> we're, we're good now. I okay. think we're good now. <laughs> and then uh, this past year, we had a lot of parades come back. We, uh, we had a great time. 
That's right, good. Right, great time. Well, you, you got started, uh, it, you know, pretty interesting. I didn't know this until we started getting ready for this. You, you were born in New Zealand. Uh, well, actually, my parents oh, were. Oh, your parents uh, were. Yep, I was, okay. Yep, I was born uh, in Washington, D.C. here. My dad worked for the military um, and then uh, been here ever since. But my family is definitely from New Zealand. Yeah. Great. So I would like to introduce here to the Queen of Snows, uh, as I mentioned, Kirsten Knutson. I just want to give you a little background with her. She's phenomenal. Uh, I've gotten to know her, uh, has given back so much to our great city the last two years. She's a guidance, guidance counselor at Community of Peace Academy. Uh, kids know Carnival, but are surprised you are queen, I guess, with your, your folks. And you met your husband through Carnival. He's a 2018 Royal Guard, and uh, you talk about community involvement. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Kirsten. Involvement and volunteers. I'm just finding ways to give back to my community because I think that's so important to strengthen community. Um, so something that I teach a lot with my students is finding ways to get involved. Um, and this was a great opportunity for me, myself, to practice what I preach, finding a way to get involved in something that I love and I'm passionate about, um, which is the St. Paul Winter Carnival, and reaching out um, and volunteering as many ways as I can. Awesome. And ladies and gentlemen, I just want to make this point. Uh, the King and Queen are here, that, again, for the last two years, but every year the royal family and the Vulcans make about three to 350 visits all throughout the year to communities, schools, senior housing. Uh, it's amazing. It's not just a 10-day commitment during Winter Carnival. It's really a lot of uh, mm -hmm. visits. Would you say that uh, th throughout the year? Yeah, we are pretty busy during the 10 days of Winter Carnival. We um, visit over 100 different places. We visit local businesses, schools, nursing homes. Um, and then throughout the year, we also just do a lot of nursing home visits, school visits, just spreading the legend of Winter Carnival. Um, and on our downtime or some evenings, we also attend local charity dinners as well as volunteering through local community organizations. Well, Kirsten talked about volunteering. Volunteering is a big part of Winter Carnival. Winter Carnival is all volunteer. We have, uh, there's only one, I think one or two staff people for, for part of it. It's a great place to volunteer. It's a great place to meet people. We often uh, talk about, we should start, uh, Dan and I talk about, we want to start festivalmatch.com because there's so many marriages that occur. <laughs> Kirsten, would you like to speak to that? Yeah, so I am one of those marriages that happened with the St. Paul Winter Carnival. I met my husband um, in 2018 and he was sure, a King's Guard. Um, just one thing about that is, it, there's no more special place than the St. Paul Winter Carnival where you are mixed with a group of hundreds of individuals that all have the same in common goal and mission as yours. And it is a really um, safe environment for you to just get out and meet people, whether it's your future spouse or just really lifelong friends that you get to meet, which is really special. Um, Winter Carnival, I think, always holds a special place for anybody who gets involved um, because there is a place for every single individual, which is really, um, really special and unique. Absolutely. I think that's a great point, too, about being a safe place because it's, uh, you know, it, you're, you're in big groups. It's a great place to meet people. And, and Darren, you've been involved in Winter Carnival for some time. What other positions have you held? Uh, well, this is, am I on? Can anybody hear me? I don't think this is working. Yeah, it is. Uh, this is my fourth uh, royal family. I was a King's Guard in 1993, I, defending Boreas and the royal family. And then I came back as a Prince of the Northwind in 1996. Uh, and then a, a captain in 2006. And then last uh, year was King Boreas. So uh, almost 30 years yeah. in the St. Paul Winter Carnival volunteering and spreading the magic. Thank you, Boreas. You know, one thing I just want to do before the parade starts, there's a shout out to all of our great sponsors that make uh, tonight possible. I'll just take a couple here. Oh, Ham here it comes. Yep, Hammernick's Interior Solutions, XL Energy, Seven Corners, Eyewitness 5 News, and Cub, amongst many. Well, Spire Credit's a big one. Dan's a big part of that. Thank you. Well, folks, it looks like we're going to have a parade here. We've got the uh, lead police car. St. Paul Police are escorting the uh, parade tonight. While well, the St. Paul Police Fire Department operates out of 15 fire stations located throughout the city in three districts, under the command of three district chiefs and a deputy chief each shift. Well, Dan, let's talk about some more of those uh, sponsors. Well, we looks like we got a little gap here. I see uh, the Vulcan bees He's coming down the road. You know, another big sponsor, uh, Dan, I know you get to the St. Paul Hotel. We've got uh, five eyewitness news. They'll be in the parade tonight. The, uh, so 
Yeah, we just thank those sponsors so much for the great work that they do. And this is just some of them. There's a tremendous number of sponsors for Winter Carnival. And all the people that you see around here doing things are volunteers. You'll see folks in blue jackets and red jackets. Uh, they're out here uh, uh, just volunteering. And, and one th important thing that we've all said about volunteering is you get more out of volunteering than you give. I think there's no question about that. Well, here we go. We've got the uh, banner now in front of us. Yes, yeah, so we've got the banner carriers. These are the lead, the lead banners are carried by the ladies from Global United. Thank you so much. One of the sponsors is at uh, XL Energy. And they're right there, yes. Yeah. Oh, you can see the torches coming. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yes, so many of these amazing ladies that are carrying these vintage V signs are actually wives of all of our past Vulcans that we have. So this is just another opportunity for families to continue to get involved and volunteer with the St. Paul Winter Carnival. You know, that is one of the things too. When you when you get involved in Winter Carnival, it's not just you. It's a family event. Uh, the uh, spouses are involved. The kids. There's lots of things for the kids to do. Uh, it's a lot of fun every time you uh, go to any of the events. That's 100%, Tom. And you know, here we go. Uh, we are. We talked about the Vulcans being at the end. They're also up front as well. And these are the first pass torches are carried by members of the fire and brimstone. All, these are all the past Vulcans, so hail the Vulc. This is just a small taste of the fire you're going to see, though, as we go through this. Now, a lot of our Vulcans are uh, St. Paul police officers, firefighters. Uh, there's been a long tradition of those folks uh, uh, joining Vulc, and they're uh, you know, great service providers. So we thank them for their service to the community. We got a little dance over yeah, there. I like not, that. And I'm not sure how good an idea that was. <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive, though. They did not, no one was burned. Synchronized torch carrying. There you go. Hail the Valk. Hail the Valk. So again, this is the past uh, from the past Vulcan crews, and uh, they start gathering right here below by the library, and kind of all gather as the crowds get larger and larger. So now we talked a little bit about that first Winter Carnival in 1886, oh. and it, it was quite an event because uh, various Indian tribes in the area actually set up camps. They had tobogganing. They had uh, they built an ice sculpture uh, castle from uh, and brought ice from Lake Minnetonka that they harvested harvested from there. Imagine all that's done with horseback and sleigh and uh, I, I, I was the wheel invented then? I, I <laughs> <laughs> Good point though, Tom, but it's amazing to think about the, the, all the work that they did and those massive ice palaces that they built back in the day. Yes. Well, now we've, we've been around for a few ice castles. I can't imagine how they built them. I, I can't I either. mean, just even building an ice castle today is quite a feat. It's hard to even get anyone that was willing to do it anymore <laughs> because of the liability. Yes. I think they had a few less torch, they had more torch then, or less less lawyers. <laughs> yes, I think you're right. <laughs> Did you guys know that the first ice palace was built up on Capitol Hill before the Capitol was even built? Oh, was it before the Capitol? Oh, I didn't know that. Up. But they used to have great toboggan run up there. I remember doing it as a kid. So uh, you all met Laverne as we started the parade, and now we've got some, a uh, lot of, uh, Laverne has a lot of company here. You can see that, it's starting to gather here as well, yes. I wanna do a shout out to a good friend of mine with City County Credit Union. Uh, they're the premier sponsor of the Vulcan Snow Park this year out by the uh, uh, State Fair. And uh, thank you, thank you so much. So we had City County Credit Union went through here. I, we're having a little trouble seeing. Right now we've got uh, Chris Egret from uh, KSTP. He's a recipient of the Edward R. Morrow uh, Award for Journalism, and he's our media sponsor tonight. So welcome, Chris. Uh, KSTP has been a great sponsor for yes. Winter Carnival every year. It's good to have you. Thank you so much, Chris. Congratulations. Yep, you're the best. Oh, I'm starting to hear the old A's. Mm -hmm. You know what that means. The south winds are coming. But you talk about being, uh, they were up on the, the Capitol Hill, 
So they used to use Capitol Hill to create this long toboggan ride, uh, slide back in the uh, 50s where you could come and go down the, the slide as part of Winter Carnival. And they had, they had the same thing uh, the very first year up there. I've, the, I've seen pictures, it looked, it looked incredible. Well, it was fun, I did it as a kid, so it was a lot of fun. Hey, maybe we could have the queen here tell us a little bit about the south wind. So tell us, what, what, who is the south wind and why is this important? Yes, yeah, so the south wind in the tradition or the legend of the St. Paul Winter Carnival, they are trying to also help the Vulcans bring the summer and bring the heat. They are a member of the royal family, um, but they can see the benefits of summer. Um, same, or the South Wind organization helps support the city through Winter Carnival um, several times throughout the year, um, visiting various different cities as well. Um, they are always looking for south winds. So if you enjoy the heat in summer and a passion for Winter Carnival, please check out their website. Look at stpaulwintercarnival.com um, to see how you can be a member of the south winds and ride that super fun south wind bus. Ole. Ole. Hey, uh, hey yep, hail the south. Something you should know about the south wind, we alluded to this earlier tonight. They have been known to abandon Boreas in the overthrow and to help Vulcan. Yes, they, uh, they've been known to be, he's been known to be a traitor for sure. Uh, but they have a lot of fun and they do bring the heat, don't they? Yep. I think I see uh, Ben and Lene from 2020 and 21 up on the top as honored guests. It's always a party on the South Wind bus. Yeah, they're always having fun, that's for sure. So we've got the uh, Pioneer Press coming up now. Finer Presser featuring Kathy uh, Burden this uh, tonight, the arts and entertainment editor for over 25 years and soon to be retired. Kathy, welcome. Hail the South. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for being here tonight. All right, we've got uh, Captain Ken's Foods. Um, do you want to take that, Queenie? Yes, so Captain Ken's Foods, we are featuring the Medallion Finders. Congratulations, good work <laughs> on that. Um, the Medallion Finders are Skylar Sawyer um, of 22, found the medallion of the 2022 Pioneer Press Treasure Hunt. Again, congratulations. So what you see them riding on today is a 1923 Aurens Fox Fire Engine, which participates in parades all around the community. Thanks, guys, for being here. Yeah, congratulations, Skyler. That's great. That's, uh, that's a lot of fun. I did a lot of searching for that. I grew up right by Highland Park, yeah. so we searched the golf course regardless of the clues. Yes. Now, hey, it's my honor here to talk about the celebrity Grand Marshal. Tony Oliva was just elected into the Hall of Fame. Wow. He's a yep. rookie of the year in 1964. This, yep. Where's Tony? Hey, Tony, congratulations. Uh, mm. Hall of Famer, great that you're here tonight. Thank you. Congratulations, Tony. You know, Tony's one of the uh, twins you can walk. Anybody can walk up and talk to him, yes. and he'll talk to you for 20 minutes. Yes, he's a <laughs> class guy. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much. All right, this is Miss T. Awesome, and then now we have Miss, Mi Miss Minnesota Teen USA, Annika Weiss. She's heavily involved in student life and clubs at her school with the National Honor Society, Student Council, Youth Service Leadership, DECA, and Link Crew. It's amazing that she has so much time to also volunteer outside of her schoolwork as well. Very cool to see. Very cool, congratulations. Right behind her we have Miss uh, Minnesota Latino. The ones with the lights on it, we all know the Spire truck. So here we have Spire Credit Union. I, I think we've heard of them before. I, I have heard of this one before. I love that truck. I've the, been in that truck a few times. The too. star of Spire, <laughs> Spire Archie, Archie, a 1951 Ford pickup. Is it 51 or 52? That is a 52 Ford 52, pickup. Yeah, yes, it that's is. That's what I thought. <laughs> I like the uh, lighting. That's great. Hey, it's well, a Spire, light. Spire's been, we give Dan a hard time, but Spire has been a major sponsor of Winter Carnival, major sponsor of the last Ice Castle. So we really appreciate everything they do for it. All right, next we have the guards. Hail the guard. The Royal guard. All right. Hail the guard. Hail the guard. You're uh, the best. There they are. The guards are the best in the business. They protect Boreas and their family. 
and we wish you a lot of luck here tonight, all right? Yep. Remember, it's only 135 to zero. We think you guys have it. Yes. Ooh, it looks like we have the royal family showing up. Hail Boreas oh. and hail the queen. Well, here we have uh, the Winter Carnival Royal Family. They were just actually crowned here uh, on Friday night. We have King Boreas, the 84th, Mr. Billy Gibbon, Best in the Business, Aurora Queen of the Snows, F.E. Barnes. We have the Prime Minister, Christine Army, Captain of the Guard, Brenda Hocum. They look so hopeful. <laughs> so what are you predicting tonight? Are you guys predicting victory? victory? I don't know. I think they got a little victory left in them. Well, we talked to, we talked to the king earlier tonight. He's uh, fairly confident. Hail the prime, hail the royal family. You're the best. Thank you so much. <laughs> Terry, the photographer. Hey, Boreas. Boreas, let's bring it on tonight. Let's bring it on, Billy. You know, these are the, uh, the, the, the rides you want to be in, the ones with the hot air balloons. And this is an important one because we have the bouncing grandma, Denise Cheetah. Denise is a 64-year-old grandma. And Denise, I tell you, I tried not to say that, but they told me I should. With a, she has six of her own kids and multiple grandchildren. And she's been bouncing with her daughter, Danielle, for the last uh, four years. And I guess she's decided to retire. Now, Saturday, Dan tried bouncing, so uh, we'll see who does it tonight. Well, I, I have to admit, my, my form wasn't the best, was it, Tom? You know, <laughs> I was more impressed with you climbing over the, uh, the barrier. Oh, we love, we love the bouncers, and we... Uh, I, I think I'd have gotten to the barrier and quit. <laughs> awesome. Well, the, uh, the bouncing team, hopefully we'll get to see them later in the parade. They're a lot of fun. In fact, I would predict they are coming because there's a delay here. And yeah. they're, they're a lot of fun to watch, and, uh, and people really in, enjoy that. Uh, Boreas and Queen, have you been bounced before? I mean, uh, so tell us about that. Uh, well, I've done it. I didn't go up as high because I'm kind of heavy. But <laughs> I have been bounced as well, and it was, it was a unique experience. It was really fun. Um, it was a lot of fun, and it, you have to put a lot of trust in those that are bouncing you. But, um, yeah, I think I'm good with just one bounce, and one I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Well, my I'll leave that to the professionals. Uh, they didn't tell Dan you're not supposed to land on your head. Yep, yep. <laughs> I know. They didn't tell me that, Tom. Yeah, I don't know. I, know. I, I, I thought that. you lacked instruction before you went out there. <laughs> I, I was impressed, and when they asked if anybody wanted to go, he was ready to go. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I've seen it quite a few times from this vantage point. <laughs> yes, yeah. You're, and, you're, and I'm looking you right in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> the bouncing team actually had their tryouts last night in our historic landmark center, and so that was really cool to see. Um, I encourage everybody next year to check wintercarnival.com, that events page, um, to see when they have tryouts again next year. Um, it's a really, a really fun event to go and watch. I didn't know they had tryouts, so mm -hmm. you, you people actually had to practice tryout? Yes, so the... How, how, how do you practice for that? Yes, so um, I'm not sure how they practice, but the ladies that are bounced um, on the mat that they call, um, they go on and do a tryout to see their showmanship, how high they get, the tricks that they can do, and then one um, lucky individual is selected to serve on the bouncing team for, I think it's five years. So um, is it's that at least the, a couple the, years. the lady they bounce? Yes, uh, yep, so the team the of ladies. How about the people who do the, I'm more interested in the people who hold yeah, on to it. Yeah, so <laughs> that one, um, I think the process for that is just really going and saying you wanna be a part of it, that you don't have any um, health concerns or injuries that would prevent you from doing that. And then when they have spots available, you're able to join that team as a bouncer. And they always have so much fun. Hail the bounce. Hail, Hail the, the bounce. bounce. Well, well they're, ma they're making their corner. We do have a banner here. And I just want to give a shout out to the bouncing team. I didn't realize this, but the bouncing team goes all the way back to 1886 uh, when Winter Carmel started. Yeah. Oh. That is a really cool fun fact. I didn't realize that. Well, and they're here every year. So it's, uh, it, it's great. And as you can see by the time that they're spending, people love them. Well, well love they do parades all, all summer long. They're one of the most popular uh, units and parades. 
Uh, this time I'm kind of hiding behind these pillars, if that's all right, but... Uh, They're getting ready to go right over here to the left. <laughs> oh yes, over to the left on the corner here. Here we go. Whoa. Whoa. Dan, you 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 didn't you didn't do that, Dan. No, no my, my form was far different than that. Next year, next year, next Dan year. will be doing that's, flips. That's Practice. Right. I, yeah, right I, here. I'd like to see you try it again now. And it looks like they have two crews tonight. Two crews. Oh going. yes. Two All right, we appreciate the bouncers. We appreciate you so much. You're awesome. Hello, everybody. Yes, we'd love to see one right out here in front of us. Oh yeah, they're set oh, up. Oh yeah, they're getting set up here. They're right behind the light here for me. Boy, I can't see. Okay, here we go. She's bouncing up. One, two. Up she Whoa. goes. Whoa! Nice, nice. Thank you, bouncers. Nah, that was exactly what you looked like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have this Another fun group coming up behind here, the Sterling Silver Studio. Yes, these dancers, twirlers, and fire baton twirlers from Superior, Wisconsin. Hail, hey, Wisconsin. Yes, welcome to our winter carnival. Oh, I bet that's helping keeping them warm. They don't look cold at all right now. No, not at all, not at all. Oh, they've got a lot to, uh, tonight. Yes. All right, thank you, Sterling Silver Studio. Thank you for all your great work. Love having you here. I bet they didn't know they were gonna be behind the bouncing team and have to twirl for this long. The park is looking beautiful tonight, too. Oh, it's great. You know, uh, Darren, uh, Darren's been the photographer, so we talked about in the past. You've taken one of the most spectacular pictures of this park I've ever seen. How did you do that? Uh, uh, so a few years, I've had a drone, and I've had a, uh, we got a special permit, and we get a very uh, unique view from a different angle by being up in the air. And yeah, it's just it was stunning. Just a fantastic picture. I saw some helicopters flying over earlier, and exactly, I'm sure they're yeah. getting some great photos. Yeah. Jazz, ballet, wow. Well, they brought quite a group tonight, Dan. I don't think I've, uh, I don't remember them having so many people out, so that's great. They I must have uh, read the same weather report I did that it was going to be 38 <laughs> tonight. Yes, I, <laughs> yeah, it didn't, it didn't cover the wind, did it, Tom? Uh, but, well, uh, it didn't cover the wind or the temperature, <laughs> although the wind, at least with the uh, library behind us, the wind's certainly down. I hope you folks are uh, staying warm. But yes. look, at this is a great crowd, isn't it? It's a great I crowd. I think people are just happy to be out and uh, about, and uh, it's been great. One thing, too, about if you haven't seen the sculptures, you should see them. Not very many years do they look this great by the end of Winter Carnival. Yeah, In fact, uh, sometimes they look like uh, modern art by now because it <laughs> warmed up during the week. Yeah, they're absolutely beautiful. Make sure you wake, make your way through Rice Park. Uh, we've got a next float here. I'm going to just say this is our Woodbury Ambassadors. Uh, this is their royal family, and they've been in existence for over 35 years. So thank you, Woodbury. Thank you for being here tonight. Yes, and they have a deep tradition in the St. Paul Winter Carnival as well. We've had past Miss Woodbury's also hold princess titles for the St. Paul Winter Carnival. The most recent princess being um, Kylie Johnson, our Northwind princess. She was a princess for Woodbury Days as well. Nice. Yeah, thank you, Woodbury. And I have to say also my North or South Wind Princess Lene Bow was also a Miss Woodbury as well. So lots of deep love for Thanks, Woodbury. Buddy. They look like they're having a lot of fun up there. Thank you, Woodbury. Thank you. You're awesome. Woodbury's another perennial participant in the parade and they're they're a big part of Winter Carnival. Winter yes. Carnival uh, Winter Carnival claims them. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Woodbury, again as always for being here. Now here comes the new Brighton uh, ambassador program. This is a fun one because you ever know why they exist and what they were doing? 
They used to bring the uh, cattle into New Brighton and fatten them up and water them before they brought them into St. Paul to be sold. I did not know that. So that's part of what they, uh, they're, they're doing. Well, we got the uh, ambassadors, junior ambassador, and again, their stockyard days, their big celebration is August 12 through 14. So thank you, New Brighton, for being here tonight. Now, they're affiliated more with St. Paul Winter Carnival, but I thought they should have gone with Aquatennial because it seems like something Aquatennial would have done. Yeah, yes, <laughs> that's right. Minneapolis would have done to St. Paul. <laughs> I really like the, the lights on that float. Yeah, they're, they're great, great aren't they? Yeah. Well, here's another fun one, the uh, Robbinsdale, and I love the name, Whizbang Days Ambassadors. Yeah, so they are celebrating their 74th annual festival. Um, that'll be July 7th through the 10th. So joining us today, we have Miss Robinsdale Cassie, Robinsdale Princess Natalie. We have their Robinsdale ambassadors, Natalia and Taylor. And then our Robinsdale junior ambassadors, Eleanor, Amelia, and Bella. Thanks, ladies, for joining us today. Thank you, Robinsdale. And again, that's always uh, July 7th through 10, right after July 4th. So thank you, ladies. Well, all right, now we were coming to uh, Lakeville. Lakeville's a big part of Winter Carnival. They were here for the Grand Day Parade as well. So uh, Lakeville Panel Pan, it's known as the Panorama of Progress. This unit uh, features Miss Lakeville, Emily, and Lakeville Princess, and uh, Lily and Holly, and uh, little Miss Lakeville as well. So uh, again, Lakeville, we're so glad to have you here. Thanks for being here tonight. We were actually able to be in that parade this past summer and it was an amazing parade just seeing the community all backing the town festival and that was really cool to see as well. well we Fun think parade. It's, it's great that they have these floats and you know one thing if you've got your daughter in the uh, competition and you know that you hold your breath because if they win you know you're the float driver. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> which, right. Which is a, a full-time weekend <laughs> gig. Yes it is. All your own. Oh my hometown Evergrove Heights is next. Yeah, this is where Boreas uh, just came from, Invergrove Heights Scholarship Program. Uh, the scholarship program is a nonprofit organization completely supported by fundraisers and the generous support of our sponsors. The Invergrove Heights Scholarship Program events typically start in July and run into September. So uh, Invergrove Heights, we're so glad that you're here tonight. Thank you. Now we have North uh, Hudson Pepper Fest, and this is a fun one. This is a a pretty hot one and the queen has a great time at this you want to tell yes. them a little bit about what happens yes so every year at hudson pepper fest they have a spaghetti eating contest where you eat a pound of spaghetti as fast as you can and that is always a fun event lots of lots of people come to celebrate that one um, and actually our current west wind princess is a former hudson pepper fest princess as well shannon bayer and how do you eat that pound of spaghetti um with your hands and it is very messy <laughs> um you get like a plastic bag to wear over your clothing with all the spaghetti sauce so it is it's a fun one but oh tom you gotta so, take away uh, this here's one. one that's dear to my heart the minneapolis aquatennial ambassador organization and this year's commodore my son brent lasalle Hail the Commodore. Hail, Hail the, the Commodore. Commodore. Hello, Brad. Hello, Brad. We also have the uh, Queen of the Lakes, Erica uh, Tillman. We've got Captain Amy Mousey, a former prime for the Winter Carnival. And uh, Amy's husband, Rob, was a captain with me back in 2009. We have Princess Hannah Rogers, Captain Paulette Christopher, and Princess uh, Ariana Valetschek. Hey, thank you, Brent, for having such a great year. Commodore, you're the best. And uh, yes, their program, they normally is what, in July, right, Tom? July, yeah, July, about September. the third week in July. Minneapolis Aquatennial Senior Ambassadors are in the car right behind them. We've got the Senior Commodore, Dan Don uh, Hansen, and Senior Queen, Lois Fredericks. Doogie. Next up, we have Norwood Young America. This is a very German festival. I've met a lot of amazing individuals from this community and they do a great job representing their festival as well. So you could see the name of their festival on the float. We decided we'd go with Norwood <laughs> <laughs> Young America. You notice none of us are tackling that one, but hey, thank you for being here tonight. 
I like the lights in their crowns. That's pretty. Yes. Oh, that is great. I didn't notice that. Good, good eye. Now we have the dance uh, twi twin Minnesota, the featuring their award-winning baton twirlers. How would you like to do that for a whole parade? Wow. <laughs> or how would you like oh. to even try to do that? <laughs> <laughs> No, these they're amazing, and you can even see they start them out very young. That's and the way to do that. On. Yes, That's very impressive. Very impressive. Thank you for being at uh, our parade here tonight. Oh my gosh, she's on two wheels. Oh boy. Whoa. Whoa. So Grand Seven Saloon with their uh, uh, Ural uh, motorcycle. I think we have Scott uh, d driving it tonight. It's a uh, with with a sidecar. Nobody with you though. But he's, he's sponsored by the folks at Grand Seven Saloon. Wow, he's gonna make, he's, I think he's making a turn back. He's gonna show us, uh, oh, yeah. I thought he's gonna write on the he's one. On oh, wheels. there he goes, there he goes. Whoa. Oh boy, whoa. <laughs> All right. I think we know why there's only one person on the motorcycle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Well, now we've got some, uh, a, a Minnesota all-time favorite, the Minnesota State Fair. We've got the uh, two giant gophers with us, Fairborn and Fairchild. They're the official mascots of the fair. And as all of you know, this is the biggest 12-day fair in uh, North America, uh, with over a million and a half people uh, visiting it every year. So it'll be great to have it back. We had it back this summer. Hopefully next summer we have it back fully. Yes. Oh, wow. Way to go, Minnesota wow. State Fair. We love you. Favorite time, favorite time of the year. The, Go ahead. the Osmond Shrine. I'm actually a Shriner and I uh, am one of the clowns normally when I'm not doing this role. Uh, they have multiple units here. Whoa. Lots of good things happened in 1886. The Osmond Shriners were also founded in 1886, just like the St. Paul Winter Carnival and the St. Paul Bouncing Team, which we saw earlier today. So 1886 was a pretty good year, I would say. Absolutely. You know, and what I love about the Shriners is that they provide high quality medical care to all children, regardless of a family's ability to pay, and their clinic specializes in treating children with orthopedic conditions in an environment designed to put children at ease. They do such amazing work. Thank you, Shriners, so much. Sometimes when they join us, the, the Shriners have, are, are the best parade group ever. I mean, they have, uh, today we're getting their uh, a smaller unit, but during the day parades, we get their drum and bugle corps, their cycle corps, the uh, Mighty Mites. Uh, they put on quite a show. They sure do. Awesome. It looks like next we have the June Lynn Lacey Miss Senior Minnesota America featuring Joyce Lacey. Joyce Hello, Lacey Joyce. was actually Joyce. a former queen for the St. Paul Winter Carnival in 1994. Hail the queen. This organization serves vulnerable adults and children, the elderly, disabled, and our veterans. So a great organization. Thanks so much, Joyce, for being here today. Thank you, Joyce, for all that you do. You're amazing. I see the West Wind. This is our West is Best, our rowdy West Winds. On here, we can see walking our 2020-2021 Prince of the West Wind, Dan Moran. Yeehaw! All right, Dan, oh, way to go. Appreciate you, buddy. Here comes the you know, West Winds. These cowboys represent the dependable West Wind in the legend. The West Wind is the only brother that has never defected to the Vulcans. So we appreciate your loyalty, the West. Now, weren't you surprised to learn that? I didn't know that the uh, North Wind and the East Wind had uh, defected. I did not know that as well. Hail the West, thank you so much. You are the best. The West is the best. Be careful, the east winds are pretty close. Oh, 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 the, now the next best. <laughs> now the next, the, the other best. The other best. Is the <laughs> other best. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. The other best win, the east winds are here. Let's put it this way, they've got the best costumes. They do. Whoa, here comes a nice throw. Almost, that's oh. all right. <laughs> Hell east, yes. Hell east. Got it. Hey, the, the, the East are the former East Winds and their families. Uh, they recruit and mentor new East Winds. They're protectors of the legend of Euros, who was granted by King Boreas Control. Irresponsible East Wind. They have a little bit of irresponsibility. They're unpredictable is the, the best word. Looks like we have the uh, sleigh bell dancers coming up. They're from Maple Grove. 
They've been bringing cheer to the Twin Cities since uh, 2007. They're a volunteer dance line that performs during the holiday season. I think I saw that. They've been with us before. They're fun to watch. Pages are now. 16. Okay. Oh, here they go. I could use a pair of those fur boots right I, about now. I was going to say, those <laughs> boots look really nice and warm. I love it. Uh, it's a little cold standing up here in the concrete, but those folks are standing on concrete too. So I think, I think it's Santa great Claus. to have all of you out here tonight to brave uh, the, the last cold night of Minnesota because if Vulcan wins, yes. it's going to warm up. It's going to warm up. Hey, I noticed also with the sleigh bell dancers, we have the big red guy there too. Yeah. I think Santa's uh, joining them yeah, as I well and, and Mrs. There. Claus as well. Nice to see they made the trip down from the North Pole to visit the St. Paul Winter Carnival with us. That's right. Thank you, Sleigh Bell Dancers. Well, now I see why the Tux team was back. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have any horses the other day. So, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so with our next unit, we have the ambassadors from the communities of Buffalo, Delano, Hanover, Howard Lake, Watertown, and Winstead. They would like to say a hello to St. Paul and wish to spread some cheer while they are here visiting us. They are so anxious to see if Volcanus Rex can take over winter and will bid a sad farewell to King Boreas. But I don't think that'll happen this year. I think Boreas might win. Thank you, ladies, for being here tonight. So these are communities and the floats you saw earlier. This is what we were talking about, what happens now for the rest of the year. Winter Carnival and Aquatennial will visit all of these communities as well as uh, Canada, Florida, uh, Georgia, other areas. The hardest working people in the parade right now. These are the Tux Team Pooper Scoopers. I think it's obvious what they're doing. <laughs> And have we had any horses in this parade? Right in front. Okay, oh, that's right, I'm sorry. So they're, they're in the right spot here. Thank you. Uh, you thought they were ambassadors? <laughs> <laughs> they wear white and their goal is to make sure they're still white at the end of the parade. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they've added a little red to their costumes and, uh, and a lot more dance. Well, they absolutely do it with style and flair, without a doubt. So here we comes thank Minnesota them so much. Crumpus. This is the local uh, 501C educational nonprofit. They show us the old Alpine tradition of St. Nick with his many crumpets. Yes, yeah, so in this culture, St. Nick rewards only good girls and boys of all ages with treats on December 6th. And he instructs crumpets to punish the naughty. So if you've been a good, if you have been good all year long, then you have nothing to fear from them. Yeah, I just, I'd like to, try to explain this to my three-year-old granddaughter. <laughs> All right. All right, we have the North Wind Titan Organization. Hail the North, uh, better known as the Best Wind, the Titan Organization are all <laughs> former princes of the North Wind, and uh, on the truck are the uh, former North Wind princesses and their families. Yes, and also joining them, we have the lovely Rice Street Royalty. <laughs> The Rice Street Festival and the Titan organization has a very deep connection and a strong connection. So it's so nice to see all of you here. Hail Team North. Hail Titan. Hail the Titan. Appreciate you. Well, here comes a fun group and uh, that we love to have every year. This is the Royal Order of the Klondike Cades. Wow. Yes. Welcome 2022 Klondike Cake. Tina Hacker. Tina, where are you? Wave to everybody. Can we hear a song? They're singing. Here they go. They're going to start it up. Hail Kate. Well, Klondike Kate is a friend of both uh, Boreas and Volcanus Rex. You know, the, uh, the lore there is she was the beauty of... Uh, she had beauty, charm, and a man who'd done her wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry.
starting to hear sirens. The Vulcans are coming. Here we have the uh, 2022 senior carnival royalty. Yeah, so the seniors play an important part into the tradition of Winter Carnival. They bring the wise um, leadership to the festival as well. I just want to say congratulations to King Winter, Douglas Dryland, and then the queen of the Northland is Deb Hess. So hail the seniors. Thank you so much. And then right behind them to also help with our legend and the Festival of St. Paul, we have our Winter Carnival Junior Royalty. They bring all the joy and energy to all of our events. We have Queen of the Snowflakes, Lily Schmidt, Princess of Ice, Chloe Lunzer, Princess of Snow, Lauren Bruns, and Prince of Ice and Snow, Jack Cummings. Thanks, Juniors, for being here. Yeah, thank you so much, Juniors. We appreciate you so much. Way to go. And quietly coming through the parade is Sunbelt Rentals. They offer a variety of the best-selling equipment. They're the one-stop source to quickly and easily get equipment and solutions and services you need. Yeah. Thank you, Sunbelt. Thank you. Thank you for all your help with the Winter Carnival. We really appreciate you. This is an awesome festival coming up next. We have the St. Patrick's Association of St. Paul. All right, we have featuring Mr. Pat is Peter and Mrs. Shamrock Zopia and many past Shammies and Blarney Brothers. So uh, way to go. We're glad you're here. This parade is another great parade to join in March right here in St. Paul. I know the St. Paul Winter Carnival Royal Family looks forward to this every year as this is one of the first events they get to do after their 10 days, so very exciting. Yeah, very, very exciting, yes, yes. Well, that's a tough turn for that uh, trucker there. I think he's gotta, gotta make a tight one there, but- uh, Santa Claus better watch out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give him room. So again, just on the back of this semi, who did a flawless job of making that really tight turn, we have Mr. Pat Peter and Miss Shamrock Zofia. Thank you, St. Pat's Association of St. Paul. We're just glad you're here tonight. They always seem like they're having such a fun time everywhere they go, despite the cold or the heat. They're always here to have fun and enjoy every festival they are part of. Absolutely, and please uh, find a time to come down and uh, enjoy the St. Patrick's Festival here downtown St. Paul. It's always a great time. Well, we're getting closer to some more red, some more fire, and um, we've got our festival chair. Well, have uh, you noticed who's gathered behind us? Yes, we've got the Royals. I think we have uh, Boreas and his uh, entourage to yes. uh, face it. Yes, we do. And the festival CEO, Lisa Jacobs. Lisa Jacobs, thank you so much for your leadership and your work and making our festival so awesome. Lisa, you're the best. Thank you so much. Yeah, be careful there. Uh, you are the best. Thank you for all your work. She's done such an amazing job getting publicity to this festival. She has led us all fearlessly, and she's doing Winter Carnival very proud. Thank you, Lisa. So Kirsten, who are these folks behind her? Yeah, so actually a lot of these individuals walking up behind us are actually from the South. They have come up from Florida to celebrate with us. I think like you said later or earlier on, the St. Paul Winter Carnival Royal Family goes and travels all over the United States, one of those stops being Florida. Um, and so it's so great to see our members from DeSoto, Hernando DeSoto Festival, Billy Bolegs Festival, those from Pandora here celebrating with us. It's really right. awesome to see these connections. Um, and we'll go visit them this spring as well. So that relationship and that connection continues year after year. Great. Well, Kristen, glad, thank you for joining us. Darren, thank you for joining oh, us yes, tonight. Thank you our so pleasure. Much. Great yeah, thank time. You. We're yeah, thank you so much. To bring up the king and queen. Billy. 
All right, we see uh, some of the past uh, crews. How, how's everybody doing? Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for your support. So, Dave, we have to, uh, Dan, we've got the 2001, 2009, 2011, 2013, 2014, 2017, and 2018 Vulcan crews. Well, we've got a lot of the past crews here supporting it tonight. Uh, seems like our Fire King is bringing, uh, bringing the, the people with them for sure. Hail the ball, thank you. Wow. These are all the past uh, Vulcan crews of the past uh, supporting the current Vulcan, the current Fire King. And uh, they'll all be descending over here and helping him as well. I think this line just keeps going, Tom. I mean, it's a lot of red, it's isn't it? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it is yeah. really a lot of yeah, red here. It does give you uh, some idea why they continue to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they do seem to out, out yeah, they uh, the, the yes. we do have the uh, the royal family behind us. They're they're looking a little nervous. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a lot of here. faith in them, though, here tonight. So but, King uh, Boreas, the 84th Billy Gibbons with bit. us up here now, and Queen of the Snows, oh, Effie Barnes. So we'll be talking to them in a second here. They're going to be uh, defending their realm. Well, folks, we told you we we're going to see a lot of red and a lot of fire. I don't think we let you down. Yeah, we've got plenty of red out there, but I still got a lot of faith in Boreas and the Queen here tonight. We have uh, Marjorie and Kristen uh, Win Winehagen. They are, are here with us. They are the uh, the festival chairs, so they've uh, been responsible for putting this on this year. Uh, Marjorie's a 2019 Aquatennial uh, captain, and Kristen was a 2015 West Wind. Yes, as a matter of fact, Christian Weinhagen was my West Wind oh, in 2015. Right. Yes. And uh, just a special thank you to the Weinhagens and all the time that they put into this great festival. What a great festival because of all your hard work. Thank you. Yes. It's a big job. As I told you, folks, this is all volunteers, and uh, they must have been late for a meeting. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So we've got Christian and Marjorie, and we've got Andrew and Michael. So uh, they're just amazing. And Frankie as well. We got Frankie in there too, I hope. So, all right. Thank you for your great work. Well, if you were with us earlier, we told you a little bit more about Vulcan that, uh, and his crew. And they're assembling down below here. Dan, I think they're going to take a run at uh, Boreas and the Queen. What do you think? I think they're, uh, the, yes, the torches are in line, but we're going to be just fine here. Yes, we're here for you. We're going to take you down tonight. Boreas, what do you have to say to that? Go ahead, Billy. Tell, just tell me. Are we ready, gentlemen? Get it pumped. Get going. Here we go, gentlemen. Well, Kevin's Rex. Volcanus Rex, get back! Whoa, whoa! That was an impressive charge. That was. I don't know, Dan. Volcanus Rex, it's, it's too the, cold the, for you. Stop them! What do you think? Yes. It's too cold for you, Volcanus Rex. Go back! Go back! We're not ready for warm weather yet. You know, Dan, where's the uh, where's the the uh, south wind? I, he's kind of moved up. Yes, so what do you think is going on here? So, Boreas, what do you think? You think you've got him here? You're looking pretty good here. I think here. this is going to be the first time we ever win. Yes. 
Well, There's you no do, you do. Defeat our castle. Oh, you well, got that second again. Hold back. Whoa. Get hey, back. Get hey, back. No. Oh no. No Volcanus Rex. I, 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 it's I think Forius. I think it's you might be winter. losing the the. This uh, is not your time. Where's the so keep your eye on the south wind, Boreas. No, no toast. No, no toast. Don't. No. Uh oh. Uh -oh. No, Stay no back. toast. We need you. We uh, need you, no toast. The royal family needs you. No. I think he's going. Uh oh, no, is no, he going? No, come back. Oh no. my goodness. Stay with us, no toast. Don't go. No toast. We, we need, need you. you over here, no toast, brother. We need if you, you want no summer, toast. folks, you might want to <laughs> encourage <laughs> him to go. No. Hail no toast. Hail no end. No. No, Hail no, no toast. toast. Stay. No toast. No, no. toast. No. Oh no, the south no. wind. No, no toast no. is gone. No, no toast. <laughs> this could be a serious charge. Queen, what do you think? What do you think, Queen? What do you think about the defection? Yes. Notos, come back, Notos. It's good. You guys are good. Here they come. Uh oh, do you have any advice, Queen? This might be the time. Yep. Time to go. We gotta go. Boreas, it's time to retreat to Mount Olympus. I don't know, Dan. What? I I'm shocked, aren't you? I am shocked. Uh, looks like they retreated here. Looks I like thought, uh, I thought for sure. Yes. I thought for sure. If if Notos would have stayed here, I think there would have been a good chance. There he is, Vulcans. Well, Vulk, welcome. You made it. We weren't sure, but you 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 prevailed. It was we impressive. No toast to defect and come and help us. And thank you, Boreas, for listening to the wise words of your queen. So, Boreas, this is the time to tell us who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Volcanus Rex the 84th, the true king of the St. Paul Winter Carnival. I am Fred Edstrom from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. All right, congratulations. Congratulations. Wow, congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Count of Ashes. But in reality, I am Mike Delight in Apple Valley, Minnesota. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Count Embryus. In real life, I am Kane Wallace from Apple Valley, Minnesota. I am Grand Duke of Attilius, and I'm also Robert Westland of Roseville, Minnesota. I'm Daryl Flavis from Lakeville, Minnesota, Lord Gibbler! Yeah. I'm known as Dunk the Cleaker, otherwise known as Jim Bebo from Blaine, Minnesota. I am the Prince of Soot, and I'm Bob Flood from Hugo, Minnesota! St. Paul, I am Baron Hot Sparkus. But in reality, I'm Christopher Seebeck from St. Paul, Minnesota. Hey. Walk, we'll have a couple more things and then we'll be done. You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, I officially declare winter to have ended. Join us, <laughs> join us at the, Saint, at the uh, Intercontinental Hotel for the Vulcan Victory Dance and let us see some fireworks, please. Congratulations. Great job, guys. Great job. Thank you. Well, thank you all for joining us uh, today. And uh, thank you, SPNN TV. Thanks again for joining the St. Paul Winter Carnival, the coolest celebration on earth. Make sure you, you all head down to the Intercontinental. Thank you Dan, so thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Good night. It's always fun. It's fun. Yep, another year.